An MRI is one of the tests that I got when I was first diagnosed to figure out if the cancer had spread. And it was one of the tests that really took me by surprise because I had no idea what to expect and it was a little bit more involved than I thought. So today I'm going to take you through a few of the things that surprised me as well as a few tips or insights that I think would be really helpful for your MRI experience. First of all, knowing that you're going to need to get changed. So in a minute here, I'm going to completely disrobe and put on top, bottoms, and booties. Next, I'm going to head in with the nurses and they are going to give me an IV for the contrast. And this is something that I was really surprised about. I didn't know was going to be part of an MRI. So a tip for an IV is to be really hydrated the day before. I like to drink about four liters and that helps plump up the veins so that it's easy for the nurses to get it in there for me. So I'm going to have to leave it here for now. I'll pick up when I get back home and share the rest of the tips with you. I am back home now. It was a successful scan and now I just have to sit and be patient and wait for the results. But let's get on to giving you the insight as to what this appointment looked like. So up to this point, I had my gown on, my pants and my booties. The IV is in, and now it's time to go into the room that has the MRI machine. When I move into the MRI room, there is another technician there greeting me. The first thing that happens is they give me an outline as to what the scan is going to be like. At that point, my first suggestion to you, if they don't mention it, is to ask how long the scan will take. My first MRI, I had absolutely no idea the length of time the scan would be. And based off of other tests I had, I thought it would be relatively short. But in my experience, this test lasted about 20 to 25 minutes. Not knowing that, I found myself starting to get a little bit flustered as I was moving through and it was continuing on and I really had no idea how long I would be laying there just waiting for this test to be over. So my first recommendation to you is when you're going over the details with your technician and they ask you if you have any questions, perhaps ask how long the test is going to be. And secondly, if they could let you know as the test progresses, how much time you have left before it's done. I found having a time frame and knowing how much time was left really helped to calm my nerves and allow me to push through the appointment more comfortably moving forward. Once we were all set with how the appointment would go, I was given earplugs to put in my ears immediately and asked to go over to the machine um, to open up my hospital gown to expose my bare skin and lay face down on the MRI table. It is my understanding that they have a breastplate attachment that they put on. So I was instructed to put my um, breastbone right in the middle. There's a hard metal piece in the middle and kind of line it up with that. And then the second thing I was asked to do was make sure that my breasts were on either side of that breastplate and falling uninhibited into the two holes on either side of that solid structure. Once the technicians were happy with my placement on the table, I was given a toggle to hold on to. It feels to me like the end of a turkey baster, like that circular round rubber ball. Um, I was told that if there was ever a point during the scan that I felt uncomfortable past my limit to simply squeeze that ball and that would let the technicians know that I was uncomfortable and they would act accordingly. So not knowing what to expect the first time I did this, this did give me a little bit of peace of mind that I could have help if I needed it. Once everything was all hooked up and I was as comfortable as possible, the technicians left and the table slid into the machine. This is when I discovered why I was wearing the earbuds. 
The noise is indescribable. I'm not someone who typically gets too fussed about repetitive blasts of noise, but this felt like it was on a whole new level. I began to concentrate on the noise, to fixate on it, and then I began to plea with my mind that it would stop. After my first experience, I knew that I had to go in with a different game plan to take my brain off of focusing on the noise and thinking about something else. I recommend aiming to tune out the sounds that you're completely surrounded by by taking a mental journey somewhere else. So one of my favorite places to go for my mental journey is my happy calm place. And for me, that is visualizing myself sitting on the very end of a dock, dipping my toes in the water, looking out over the completely smooth lake, being surrounded at a distance by green mountains and looking up at a completely cloudless blue sky. That helps me bring the calm. But for you, perhaps it's something different. Or if you're someone who likes to maybe move about during your visualizations, another example that I would give is to visualize yourself perhaps going for a coffee at your favorite coffee shop, ordering your favorite drink, grabbing it, going out the doors and walking around in your familiar area, doing some window shopping, seeing what you see, feeling the sun on your face, and really just taking in the scenery around you block by block as you walk through your town. This can help to keep your brain thinking about something else and going on a little peaceful journey while you are getting your scan done. If you aren't someone who perhaps enjoys visualization or for whatever reason, it's just not working at this time. Another thing that I've found helpful is to think of my to-do list. Think of what I'm gonna do next in my day or mull over a decision that is big in my life right now and really dive into those things. Focusing on something else helps me almost completely blur out the noise that are happening around me and that helps to make a way more enjoyable experience. Throughout the scans, I could hear prompts coming from the technicians telling me different things. And one of the common things that I've heard time and time again is to have shallow, very flat breathing. I'm told the reason for this is that it helps provide a more consistent image for the radiologist to later interpret. I don't know what it is, but pretty much as soon as I hear this, I instantly feel like I don't have enough air and I need to take a big breath, which is exactly against what they want me to do. So I've started administering a four square breathing technique that helps keep me calm, focused, and taking shallow breaths. So typically, the four square breathing technique would recommend a four second count. But because in this test, it isn't recommended to be taking big, long breaths in and out, I changed it to a two second count. So what I do is breathe in for two seconds, hold for two seconds, breathe out for two seconds, hold for two seconds, breathe in, and it repeats. So even just that process of focusing on my breath and repeating it in my mind is another thing that helps kind of tune out the sounds, but at the same time, it helps try to keep me calm and keep my breath very shallow. The second half of the scan is when the IV comes into play for what is called the contrast. The contrast is a 
substance that will be injected into the IV, which goes into your body. And I'm told that it helps to improve the clarity and quality of the images, which helps the radiologist interpret the scan more easily. At this point in the scan, the technicians gave me a heads up that it's time for the contrast to be injected. And to be honest, I didn't feel a thing. If they hadn't had told me that it was time for it to go in, I don't think that I would have felt anything. And I don't even know if I felt anything. If anything, it might have felt slightly cold. But even then, I'm not sure. So this was something that I was a little bit worried about because I didn't know what it was going to feel like. But in my experience, it didn't feel like anything. And before you know it, it's all over. Even now that I know what the MRI appointment is going to be like, I still find it mentally draining. However, now that I know what to expect and I implement the things that I shared with you today, it's definitely a way more comfortable experience than it was for me the very first time when I went in a little bit blindsided. So I hope that the tips and insights today help you take on your MRI with feeling a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more confident knowing what it's going to be like. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you have anything to share from your experience, please feel free to add it in the comment section below. I feel like the more we can share with each other, the more information we have, the better off we'll all be. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to join me again next time for more breast cancer journey insights, hit subscribe. I hope that you have the most wonderful day. We'll see you next time.